Hey everybody, good evening. Welcome to the Paradigm Shift. June is the Pride Month, and we get you Cosmic Pride, which is an ethno ethnocentric uh, uh, counseling and a support group founded by Dr. Shilpa Shetty Sonevan and uh, Vidya Shetty. Uh, Dr. Shilpa is a goodwill, a global goodwill ambassador, and uh, she's an LGBTQI uh, uh, LGBTQIA, right? Shilpa, yeah, yes, uh, yes. she's an activist and she's a gender specialist. And let's uh, let we're waiting for Dr. Vidya. There seems to be a little delay on her part. Hi, Shilpa, how are we doing? All good. Thank you for getting us here to explain and create an awareness among people about this beautiful people whom I consider they're really beautiful and they're one amongst us. So let's really have a rocking show by talking about all this and creating an awareness absolutely Thanks. that is what we are that is what we are here for so paradigm yeah. shift is going to keep having uh, a little uh, awareness column or an, an awareness post every week with all your questions if you have any questions uh, during the course of the interview keep posting them if we can address them because we already have a whole lot of questions that are going to be answered by dr vidya and dr shilpa and if you guys have anything please put them down we will be taking them up and every week we will have a little column where we will be um, you know uh, addressing them and if there is any uh, any uh, need for a personal consult or a personal counseling, please DM us. We will get you in touch with Dr. Shilpa and Dr. Vidya. They will be counseling you through any of the queries that you have that you might have. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Shilpa, till uh, till uh, we have Dr. Vidya on board, do you want to start about what is cosmic? What is cosmic pride? Um, this journey with Cosmic Pride was well thought of, uh, um, Shiku, and uh, I would like to explain uh, why Cosmic Pride. Uh, cosmic specifically uh, means uh, it's semi-celestial, okay, uh, extraterrestrial, okay, not an earthly kind of a being, out of space kind of uh, existence. So I consider everyone who are here, may it be a male, female, or any gender, has that identity, which we can create a better magical phase on this earth, okay? So for me, um, welcoming all the pride uh, people here and you all in uh, with uh, Paradigm Shift, I, uh, I wanted to explain this fact that why cosmic pride? Because cosmic is something which is absolutely magical in outer space. So the reason why we named this a cosmic pride uh, uh, group, a team, which would uh, create an awareness. And why this awareness uh, should be brought in? Because uh, many of us are ignorant about the fact that there is uh, there are so many genders, one. Right. Uh, secondly, many of us uh, do not have the feeling or have a fear regarding gender identities, too. Thirdly, parents who are having children growing up and need to come out of their fear to accept the fact that they have the identity, please give them the identity. Because when you're growing stage, if you do not have these identities clear enough in your mind, you will never prosper into coming in your existence on this earth. Okay, so basically understanding this fact and for schools and environment around us to create an awareness amongst us that we are all one. There should be no kind of discrimination in any identity considered here. So that's the reason why Cosmic Pride has been born here. And uh, I think Vidya and I, uh, could take you through our journey and get you introduced to many beautiful, beautiful identities here. And I'm so sure uh, Vidya would explain on the medical front and I with the psychological and Absolutely. bringing you out of the fear, getting you introduced to somebody new amongst us. Absolutely. So welcome all. Welcome all, uh, and uh, I want to take this opportunity to welcome Dr. Vidya Shetty. She's an obstetrician, she's a gynecologist, she's a director at a Sai Leela Hospital, she's a medical legal expert, and this is the second time that both these charming ladies have been on this platform and here we come uh, together today in a different role with, the, with uh, Cosmic Pride. Hi Dr. Vidya, how are you? 
I'm fine. Thank you so much for having us on the phone again. It's always a pleasure conversing with you and having Silpa around. Let's get on the tape. And we must Thank tell you, you that, uh, and we must tell you that Dr. Vidya has come running from the uh, uh, operation theater. She's still in her uh, what is that called? Uh, no, no, no. Scrubs, yeah, she's in a scrub. So uh, we are absolutely honored to have you like this. Okay, so anyway, so should we start? Uh, should we start um, this? Okay, so we've we've understood what is Cosmic Pride. So this is a support and an awareness group. We are creating awareness here, and if anybody would like to uh, contact us again, I am I'm saying this uh, for a personal consult or um, counseling. Please contact us. Okay, so let's get into the second question. What is gender identity and gender role? So should we start with uh, Dr. Vidya? uh it's very important for us to understand that we have a basic concept if it's a male or a female and for us maybe considering up situation i know when i deliver a baby i very clearly say ladka hua hai and then i say ladki hua hai but uh, now we have come to understand that the external genitalia which we actually say that this is a male or a female could be just a birth sex of the person the gender identity is what the person feels from within just because he is born with external features of being a male or an external features of being a female that doesn't make him internally a male or a female so that is what we would like to bring on this platform gender identity is something that a person feels he is or she is so this is one thing that all of us need to respect and understand and gender role is how this person comes out in public how he likes or she likes to dress if a girl likes to dress more in a masculine form then that is her gender role if a male likes to dress up more in a feminine mode then that would be her gender role so this right. is the basic concept that we all need to understand this is her gender and they have the freedom of being who they are the way they are and how they like to be so that's what we would like to highlight today right dr shilpa would you like to add something uh, to this yes uh, i would i would uh, put in more emphasis on gender role because as in growing stage i have personally noticed that many children are confused on identifying themselves okay being into the education sector for a period of almost 25 to 28 years i've come across many growing young children who have this problem saying what they are they fear of not identifying themselves they're not in their comfort zone okay so uh, identifying oneself what and where do you belong in which section is something that is given as per name okay but i preferably say please do not put us in those slots of names okay it should be very natural because among so many genders that we have around which has been actually slotted uh, we also belong to one of them so we are all one basically but identifying the basic you inside you what you feel is very important psychologically uh, because uh, in during our growth <clears throat> that actually brings in a lot about your existence and your personality growing up uh, so uh, all these things are related to the existence and personality and we have to be comfortable to identify who we are okay so gender identity is something which i feel also is a very important part of one's own existence around right okay so we move to the next one uh, shilpa you have you are a goodwill a global goodwill ambassador so would you tell us your work with the third gender a little bit about the third gender and your work with the third gender okay um yes uh, i am a global goodwill ambassador been working with the third gender for the past 22 years okay this has been uh, my passion towards going to help them out and bringing them out of their comfort zone and making them uh, quite known around that their existence is there okay uh, but medically i think vidya can explain it further uh, i'll i'll explain you uh, how did i get into it uh, shiku the reason why i want to tell you is because i was like one amongst us 
a homophobic or probably i was not ready to accept anything besides a male and a female beside me something different okay this was my growing stage of life that was that uh, approximately yeah. yeah 12 years of age when i was very young uh, and uh, you know in mumbai when i was staying there uh, during wednesdays we used to have a transgender who used to come home and ask for food money whatsoever so every yeah. wednesday she used to come i i say she because she is to be dressed up she was a cross dresser okay we can identify them in different manners uh, so uh, she is to come to ask for money or food or whatsoever and that particular wednesday my parent wasn't there and i was the one who was supposed to open the door and i opened the door and i said she's not there my mom is not around so it it was very funny very sweetly actually it was a very sweet act uh, that she wanted to scare me and uh, and she could see the expression on my face a 12 year old you know uh, and she suddenly because she was she was not uh, i mean uh, something that i had not expected uh, to be happening for the next 5 minutes she just picked me up and said mummy nahi hai then she picked me up and she put me under her sari okay at that moment of time it was it was so scary okay because a 12 year old doesn't know what's happening first secondly why is she doing this to me and thirdly those kind of reactions built in a lot of things that are blocks in my mind regarding people from the third gender then uh, eventually i started recognizing that okay she is not only coming home and doing i mean asking for food or something like that but i saw the similar kind of third gender people in the uh, you know when we need to stop the vehicle near the signals okay but right. what made me really yeah really uh, aware that moment of time that there is an existence of third gender around me and until then till the age of 12 i haven't seen them then i started hearing stories about them so eventually i grew up with a lot of uh, transphobic emotions towards the third gender okay transphobia is something that is uh, showing hatred or fear or not accepting or do not want to be in around associated so that kind of a phobic personality i grew up with it but when i was growing up i realized that uh, they are the third gender and they need help and uh, they are just like us and uh, why are we differentiating them okay so uh, eventually i started getting into education and then educating people and getting out uh, into teaching field i started my small own way of getting and getting in touch with them and uh, you know educating them trying to get them uh, educated trying to get them stuff done where they could come out of their uh, inhibitions and get to uh, be recognized among the general yeah. public <clears throat> and that's how 22 years i could help out quite a few of them and i think it was a blessing being with them around because they are i i still call them wonderful people and beautiful people because they're really celestial it's it's an amazing journey of mine being with them Uh, and uh, i i just want so many others around us here to come out of transphobia and homophobia and actually accept people around but yeah, just so this is better uh, that, of, that is, yeah yeah that is so beautiful because you know this is how our conditioning how our paradigms are made that you know there is something yes. scary there's something not normal which is correct but uh, before you go on to something else i want to know then what happened she put you under the sari and then what happened because that really oh yes i i was i was uh, i i struggled my way out uh, in the next 3 minutes because i was actually gasping for breath and i was i was petrified to the core and i came out of it uh, but uh, you know that period of time from years 12 years of age to the age of 18 that fear was so badly instilled in me that when i used to see them i used to cross the road and go and that is natural you know that happens with all of us mm. Of okay, at some point of view, yeah, I I used to cross the road and go. Or the if if I see them near the signal, I used to tell my father just move that side. You know, I used to tell my father. Father saying why he was so scared. But yes, that is the time I really realized that there was a third gender existing around me. And then later, of course, uh, my curiosity um, made me, and also my uh, you know my elders are the ones who really support me doing anything that could be out of my comfort zone for people. as in humanitarian you know in on the grounds of humanitarian uh, work so i i really credit my elders who really supported me to go out of my space to help out people and and that i could do my little bit for them amazing you amazing know? so uh, dr vidya while we are on the same question of transphobia and you know that 
that meant to be uh, my question later on would you like to also address it so that we can get that out of the way and we can actually show the paradigm shift here uh the actually the phobia that uh, radhi was just explaining that is the time when i realized uh, when i was in the 10th grade and my father was had suddenly had a cardiac arrest and he was admitted to the icu i was just sitting on the stairs and crying and when i was crying suddenly this person was standing next to me while crying also i was so scared i was ready to get up and run and immediately he just you know kept uh, uh, his hand on my head and said uh, you don't worry you will be perfectly fine and it was so nice it was so consoling i felt it so nice and that was the time when i realized ki it's not that uh, think we are one who are afraid and we are the one right. who are phobic people are phobic towards us they don't mean bad you know maybe that gesture of putting her under the sari must have been just what I am not so kind, you know. Maybe some other lady yeah. would have done it. You don't have a phobia, but right. uh, this is how we take them, or rather, this is how uh, we. This is our approach, which we change. And I am uh, really happy that probably with this platform we can bring that change. My daughter is so phobic that she does not sit in the auto rickshaw. She always says, "Auto rickshaw, I will go inside both of them." So where do I run? I am so scared of them. So where do I run? I am so scared of them. you know but right. this is something that we have instilled in our children or probably this is what yes. they have learned from us so this right. is one your attitude that all of need to change and is for uh, bringing about this awareness and uh, all of us having a bold uh, maybe on a bold conversation on this vidya we lost you vidya we Vidya, hello. Vidya, we can't hear you anymore. Do you want to just do you want to just leave and come back again? Yeah, just leave and come back again. Okay. Uh, while while uh, mm. Vidya, just, yeah. While Vidya uh, touched upon yeah. Vidya, can you can we hear you? Can you say something? Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. I just want to bring this one thing. Like, आपने बोला ना? Yes, we can hear you now. आपने जैसे बोला ना दैट ऑटो से दोनों तरफ से आ रहे हैं आई हैव नोटिस दिस दैट यू नो इन द पास्ट देर वॉज देर वॉज दिस प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज आई थिंक पीपल द द यू नो द कम्युनिटी वॉज नॉट एक्सेप्टिंग दैम बट एज मोर एंड मोर एक्सेप्टेंस इज कमिंग अबाउट लाइक आई हैव सीन नाउ वेन एवर आई ट्रेवल बाय ऑटो they absolutely leave you alone they will come there they will beg or they will ask for uh, some food or money or something and if you don't uh, you know if you don't converse them with them or whatever they just leave you alone and go away so i think there is a whole lot of changes happening in our uh, perspective towards them are uh, you know uh, this and their also you know their reactions towards this so yes it is you were saying something dr vidya when we lost you do you want to continue that Lost it. I just oh, want to add in one one more incidents which happened with me, and over time I have been uh, with the transgender community and trying to get them out of prostitution and begging and getting them educated uh, in in any which way I could, you know, and get them a skill or get them into starting a business or uh, you know having a job. That's what I've been doing it from last 22 years. In between, um, when I was about this is this is about about 10 years back, and I was I was back from Mumbai. My bus uh, came in quite late because of heavy rains in the Ghats, and it reached uh, at about quarter to 12 or 12ish midnight. Okay, my husband was waiting uh, at the station, but. Uh, he waited and he uh, he didn't uh, want to wait longer and he said okay fine when you come closer give me a call or else take a rick and come or take a uber and come whatsoever so uh, i was okay with it uh, traveling in pune is safe at that hour so i was fine with it i landed and i saw no soul on the uh, on the road where right. i was waiting right. i was waiting for a rickshaw and i could see nobody there and uh, at that moment of time you can imagine what happens when a lone lady stands there uh, on the road and there is nobody around you so um, a very uh, a very sweet uh, uh, you know a third gender came to me and she said uh, 
क्या कर रहे हैं आप ये वक्त एंड आई वॉज लाइक रात देख रही हूँ रिक्शा वगैरह मिला तो घर जाऊंगी बस लेट हुआ सो शी सेड मैम आपको मैं रिक्शा में छोड़ देती हूँ एंड आई वॉज लाइक इन टू माइंड शुड आई गो आई शुड गो सो द लुक ऑन माई फेस गेव दी एक्सप्रेशन आउट टू हर एंड शी सेट भूल गए मैं आपकी ये ये बैच में थी और मैं राम टिकड़ी से हूँ and i was like oh my god i you know it was such a pleasure to see my own student there i said uh, what are you doing at this hour so she said no uh, actually i have my own rickshaw and uh, you know i'm at this hour you know main rickshaw chala rahi hu to main bula sakti hu aapke liye chahiye to so that is the time when i realized that yes that you know when you really extend your hand to help out they too want to come and they want to also prove themselves they have the they have the guts too and they have much more uh, yeah they have the ability to do much more things like just any of beautiful. us beautiful beautiful okay so uh, uh, let me just go on to the next question uh, do you want to uh, vidya from the medical point of view dr vidya if you would like to add something about the third gender uh as a doctor when i said them uh, i really feel bad because many a times the problem is that uh, they do not know which doctor they should approach that is one part the second is even now we know have as practitioners who know how to deal with their problem how to deal mm-hmm. with them. and right. also it is uh, the approach of the other patients to them because in such mm-hmm. uh, when a third gender is sitting the outpatient you know admitted in the ward immediately there is a discomfort that is there we all need to understand that addressing their health issues is one of the major problems because they undergo all the health issues like all of us and they need right. medical help and it's really very important in fact they are the people who also need the psychological support which is really very important because we do not understand that sort of uh, you know a different uh, look is more than enough it's a bigger insult right. and that right. takes a lot of fuss um, from them because of which what happens is they feel forbidden to approach any public sector or to approach the doctors or they don't know where to go if they are getting admitted where are they to admitted to the gender of their choice or the gender that they show you know so and also the commonest diseases abuse yeah. alcohol uh, hiv uh, major cancers these are all very common with the third gender and as a doctor it hurts to see this but the problem is probably now with these platforms we can also have more people who will join us and be willing to understand their issues and also you know, try to give them some preferences and try to give them adequate and equal opportunity so that right. they do not have a withdrawal from this. so that's what i would uh, tell you know, on this platform i would like to tell everybody that they are one of us a little different so we need right. to and accept them as one right. so that right. is uh, one i also want to add in something I here do. right wonderful um i want to add in uh, just a little description about trans the third gender you have uh, three names given for different types in uh, third gender you have the transgender you have the transvestite and the transsexual so uh, one that gets into cross dressing after being known that you know you have a choice of identity as a transgender then you want to cross dress okay and then even if you want to change to become that identity gender okay that also is possible that is known as transsexual so these three terms are used for variety of reasons why a person wants to identify uh, after being a transgender uh, whether you want to be in this side or whether you want to really change your gender to match up to that particular gender identity right okay. vidya Absolutely. Absolutely, this is really good. Yeah. So, uh, would you like to uh, also explain to us medically and psychologically what is gender identity? Like we, uh, you know, we've talked about it, but if you can give a little dis- uh, definition. So, whoever likes to take the question first, Doctor Vidya, you would like to go first. 
Okay. Uh, basically, uh, what happens is, <coughs> if we go at, uh, you want to know the exact cause of why this happens, right? So, uh, medically, when we look at it, there are a lot of research and scientific work that is being done on this. Right. So, uh, do, when, do, when all this research is done, there is one chromosome that is the receptor, which is called an NRC34. So, this is a small allele. Allele is a small part on the uh, DNA, which repeats itself. And this is the kind of DNA that is seen in case of male to female conversion. And a similar one called CRY. CRY is another part of a gene which is seen in case of female to male conversion. So, what we see many times is that person is like that. It's not like that. Okay. There is some problem in the genetic constitution. So the person is not to be blamed. It is the way he is made or she is made. That's how the third gender is made. Secondly, there are studies which show that when you look at the brain matter, there is a big nucleus, one part of the brain. Whenever the person is having a conversion from male to female that we see, their brain, brain nucleus, even though the external characters are like male. Similarly, when the external characters are like a female, but the gender identity is for male, the red nucleus is of the size of a male. So that means that this is not something that this person has done by choice or taken it by uh, himself or herself that I want to be like this. It is something right. that he paid for. And also we have studies which show that a number of hormones, a lot of, uh, you know, like during the pre-period or during the conception period or when there is a baby in utero, if there is exposure of androgen, they can get change to the placenta. And these hormones also... It's a little the unclear. Sorry, it's a little unclear. We lost you there. Can you just, uh, you want to just try with your earphone? Yeah. Yeah, Mona. Hi, Mona, Ripali, Shobha, better? Pradeep. Yeah, much is better. Is this better? Yeah. Much better, so, much better. Can you go back to that when there is conception, when you were talking about yeah. conception? So, yeah, so what happens is during, uh, in the preconceptional period, the prenatal period, that is when there is a baby is there in the mother's womb. At that time, if the mother has some exposure of hormones like androgens, these hormones can cross through the placental barrier. And what happens is the formation is dependent on the genes, which is already formed, which is already done. And these additional hormones cause a lot of confusion in the body. And that could be one more reason why they develop this, uh, you know, a different kind of feeling or, I mean, this confusion, gender confusion that they have. Even... Uh, if we try to understand, those people are also going through a gender confusion because we have seen them. So we say that you are a male or you are a female. We, we do that. We can see that very clearly. But the issue is that he does not feel or she does not feel the same. She just looks like that. So this is what we need to understand that this is not happening happening by their choice or they do not have the choice to say that no I will not feel I will not feel attracted to this girl I will not feel attracted to this boy it's not like that it is something that is God has created within them it is a creation that is done so it's not within their control whether they want to be like that they want to dress they like to dress like a girl like they like the looks of it they enjoy themselves being a girl so that is something that we all need to understand and respect again. Right. So you are saying, uh, just just because, you know, we lost you for a, a couple of minutes or something, I just want to, uh, you know, just revise this. That means everybody who has this feeling of, like, say, in this gender identity, this LGBTQI 2SS, there is, I think, yes. a little uh, noise with, the, with your earphones again. No, my earphones are yeah. off. Oh, your earphones are off? Oh, you've taken it off. Okay, okay. Okay. So, I wanted to know that means you are saying that the gender identity is assigned at birth 
at the preconceptual stages. This is what you are saying. It okay. could. It could. These are just it research could. studies. Now we do not have okay. anything like this. You know, pinpoint karo ki this is the cause. Yeah, ye right. hua. Iske liye aisa hua. These are certain probable things, or probably there are yeah. combinations and permutations of a number of things. But the right. only confirmatory thing is the bed nucleus in the brain. When that was studied, this difference was seen. That okay. the gender and the size really differed, and probably that okay. is the reason why there is a difference in quite a lot of the activities. The uh, if, and the bed is important for sex and for hmm. other emotions. So okay. That, okay. that is where the main emotional part has come up. So Correct. this scene, this is a scene change. So other than that, we do not know whether all of the factors work. Some factors work. In fact, there are studies that even say environmental factors. Okay. We do not know how well they work and how much they work and at what level they work. But right. everything could be contributing. The reason why I'm stressing so much on this is just to say that it is not choice. It is not choice. Yes. Just like it yes. is misunderstood that it, this is a choice. It's not a choice. It is something assigned at birth. Different. It's just different. That's it. Right. So that right. difference has, is to be respected and not pinpointed. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Shilpa, do you want to take this question also? Um, psychologically, yes, yes of course. Uh, because uh, when you see people uh, or children growing, uh, okay. by parents, you know, who notice that children are growing, uh, typically in our kind of a society, we notice that children have preferences of choices. Uh, if they're born uh, with a particular gender, they like things of another gender. Okay. Uh, of the opposite gender, or probably uh, they like behaving or dressing up like an, you know, the opposite gender. So this again is a choice, as uh, Vidya rightly explained. Uh, this should be understood, should not be mocked around or ridiculed. Okay, that's what happens in the society where we tend to ridicule this or make fun out of it, and the child who is growing up tends to either close down, have a block. Or uh, tends to have a lot of emotional upheavals going through, uh, you know, the growing stage, and at that time of point of time, uh, it needs to talk it out. So be open as parent or friend or somebody who can be approachable uh, for the child to explain what he or she feels within. It's okay to be born as a male or a female, but even if I'm born as a male or a female, what do I feel inside? Am I a male or female? It doesn't right. matter. Open up, come out, because you are helping the child to come out of its uh, fears, basically, and blocks of mind. And imagine yeah. there are so many who go through this fear up to the age of 30, 40, or up to the age of 25, and they're yeah. forced to get married uh, to the opposite sex, and they feel uh, they're not comfortable. Why are you forcing them? to do something yeah. which they are not comfortable. So gender yeah. identity uh, is a very sensitive uh, issue and sensitive because you have to know how you, f you, you consider the other things important in your life with your relationships. Please understand that when you have a relationship with a child born or a person who has gender crisis of identifying what and who the person is, please sit down and hear first. That is very important. Have an open mind to accept the facts of life because, as Vidya said, it is there from within. Okay, it's not something that has been contagious or it's come from somewhere else or it's in the you know surrounding that's been forced in for you to uh, accept a particular gender. It's clear yeah. enough that whatever you feel within, let it come out. Okay, and accept yeah. the fact. Others around you, everybody matter. Either it's relation or friends or, uh, you know, colleagues do matter because uh, all have to look at the person not as something that is, uh, you know, out of space. Of course, you have to recognize this feeling that the person needs help and bring the person out of that and let him be what he or she what he wants to be. Right. You don't need to, yeah. you don't need to really, you know, pick on them. Right. So I think uh, the growing yeah. up stage, the adolescence and the teenage is very important. During the puberty, it is quite uh, uh, obvious. The, the behavior comes out in a very uh, different manner because 
either you uh, you subdue suppress yourself and uh, you're lost in the gender confusion okay or else uh, you retaliate uh, you know there are two ways of reactions for anybody who is in the growing up yeah. stage yeah so how would you handle a situation if you're a near and dear one right you should yeah, watch out on these and let them be what they are absolutely and, uh, also uh, your dikshika we would like to uh, highlight one more thing like many people say ki wo 16 17 tak to ekdam okay tha uske baad like many people feel that in case uh, there is any such feeling to bachpan mein wo doll ke sath nahi khelta tha ya bachpan mein i used to put uh, you know girls clothes that is why such a thing has happened you know so the thing is that the person can come out with his identity at any point of his life or her life there is no particular time there is no way to gauge there is no uh, investigation which you can do and actually understand is this certain thing going to happen so that's something that all of us yeah. need to understand so even if uh, the person is completely fine has a family goes ahead at 45 at 50 and then realizes ho sakta hai the child is at 16 18 20 and suddenly realizes his attractions ho sakta hai so it is all okay. uh, probably till 45 50 is restrained himself not uh, doesn't want to come into the open doesn't want you know to show the attraction so living by the normal society and the normal uh, family norms so this right. is what we need to understand so there is no particular time or particular uh, you know age or anything in particular where a person should you know uh, uh, show signs or where we can identify ki now my son or daughter are become 22 or 25 to abhi kuch nahi hoga so Correct. we need to just respect it ki now this person understand his identity probably has come out or she's come out of her confusion and now understand right. this is what i like this is what i want to do and this is how i want to live so okay very well point. very yeah yeah very the well we should be there to accept and stop judging you know stop judging yeah. people around or uh, with their yeah. preferences or their uh, existence or even their uh, approach or attitude let yeah. them be what they are let the people realize you know just be it approachable so that they can come out if they need to if they don't need to it's fine and good but you don't sit and judge people and this yeah. specifically goes to all good people around us that are parents our relatives our friends to stop doing that and let everybody live you know correct that's Absolutely. very important yeah so uh, let's move to the next question which says uh, you know what are would you if you can explain uh, shilpa that you have been working with this uh, thing uh, what are these genders lgbtq i to ssaa and how many are more yet to be recognized and experienced um as of now uh, commonly known um, is lgbtq to ssa okay i'll explain you about this in detail but there are about 42 to 72 other gender identities where people can identify themselves to that includes even one amongst us who can identify to one of those gender identity but uh, these are the common ones and uh, these are identities one realizes will growing up that uh, i belong to this or i have this preference or i i i feel this the basic thing is i feel is very important and um, lgbtq ia goes in like this when it's lesbian or gay uh, it it's it's a feeling uh, the lesbian is basically having attraction towards the same sex as a girl to a girl a female to a female okay right. yeah and uh, uh, getting attracted that means it doesn't mean anything to go uh, into uh, not necessarily go into anything to do with physical even getting attracted is a sense of emotional uh, attachment okay so having attraction if or if not towards sexual uh, preferences but still having attraction towards a female female to female is lesbian male to male is gay okay and uh, transsexual 
transgender and transvestite we have already explained about them then the queer group okay this is a group uh, which is uh, has not identified where exactly i belong to but can get attracted to this can get attracted to another gender and then you have intersex i think uh, vidya can explain intersex uh, better uh, you have two ss that is two spirited means uh, you have the female spirit that is the energy and the male energy as well in yourself and then uh, these are the feelings i i meant to say this is a psychological feeling what is within you what you feel as your own identity uh, and uh, then you have the asexual now uh, i want to i want to speak about this asexual in a little detailed form because it is misunderstood a sexual uh, category uh, of people are the ones who are not at all sexually attracted to anybody okay i might like you but i do not get sexually attracted they might like a same gender person they might like a uh, opposite gender person but they are not um, you know attracted sexually to them so um, they are generally if you see in the terms they are known as frigid sometimes but there's a lot of difference between an sexual and a following celibacy celibacy is something that you have accepted to follow but a sexual is a feeling from within you that you do not have or generate the sexual feeling towards another gender also some of the asexuals which i have noticed the person who i have noticed uh are coming from the abused background you know they have been physically abused and they have gone through trauma as a child as in childhood and they have created an aversion towards sexual pleasure uh from childhood after going through the trauma so they have become complete blocked uh, you know and whilst growing up and they have created that asexual feeling within themselves so there is a lot to do with this category and uh, i mean they are different from the others okay absolutely so uh, do you want uh, vidya do you, uh, do you want to talk about the intersex, intersex at this time yeah yeah, yeah. intersex uh, i have a very um, uh, nice example when i was a student and uh, i was i was in gynac and i was very interested with surgeries so i used to enjoy just any kind of surgery kuch bhi de do i am happy to do it. so we were just there in the operation theater and suddenly one male came in a surgical case with a pain so my boss uh, he was a surgeon so he just told me he said bahut time ho gaya abhi cesarean karke aayi hai are you interested to do this is a hernia karegi i said yes surgical kuch mil raha hai to main kyun na bolu aap khade ho main karti hu he said okay you start and i took the patient inside clean and open and can you believe it the hernia was a uterus with a small testis which was attached to it oh and we had to do a hysterectomy in a male and we removed the oh. uterus and uh, my surgeon was laughing like anything saying that uh, probably this was a uterus because it was a gynecologist operating on it <laughs> so, <laughs> so, oh my god <laughs> such kind of people who may have a union of both the organs the testis right. and the ovary both because we had to remove a part of his testis as well because it had more of an ovarian tissue so uh, oh. i don't know how many have been lucky enough of seeing such kind of cases but i have been very a uh, very lucky gynecologist who has done a hysterectomy in a male so <laughs> so i understand <laughs> but we had no other secondary characteristics whatsoever i mean this was something we were completely off guard completely off guard so we need to understand that the third a uh, gender doesn't have to appear something different or behave different right. or be different right. they can they can be just one among us and still right. have some problem i'm sure right. that person didn't have a choice of having a union of a uterus and a testis together obviously Even yes he was that way and the right. pain came with too much of pain and from the hernia right. there was a small uterus which was coming out so uh, right. this is a simple example of intersex So Correct. this is how it is manufactured like that. Right. Okay. So I'm going to. Uh, so this is. Uh, there is some. Is there? Can you hear some kind of disturbance? Yes, yes I am. Is, I could hear. There is. Yeah. 
you can i don't know how it is i don't know what to do with this but okay it is uh, so yeah okay so uh, let's go get on to the next are these gender now what i'm going to do is uh, okay are these genders or gender identities known at birth or will growing up uh, stages vidya would you like to take this first yeah we we just touched on it that it can uh, yeah. be seen at any point of their life yeah, yeah. at birth Correct. at birth uh, absolutely i don't think there is any way for us to understand because uh, gender identity is basically a feeling it's an emotion mm. it's got nothing to do with the external looks so not necessary I, i think intersex is the only sex where which we can identify at birth because the external genitalia yes. is different a number can of you... times uh, the female is born without a vaginal opening a male may have a penis but would not That's have fine. a urethral opening i mean those are obvious changes that can be seen at birth that is the only type i think other than that i can't uh, hear you uh, vidya shilpa can you hear vidya yes i can i can, can hear, hear vidya other... i can't hear you hello now, now actually there is no disturbance when i'm talking is it better now i don't know why i can't hear you guys at all can everybody hear you shilpa can hear vidya i can hear i can hear very clearly Not i can clear. hear all three of you <laughs> yeah is it okay now deepshika just one second hello yeah can you hear now okay i can't i can't hear you guys i don't know what to do me too I can hear. I can hear both of you. I can hear both. Yeah, even I can hear both of you. The problem is that you want me to continue. Hello. Can yeah, you hear? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. You can hear me. Yes, yes. Yes. Why can I can't hear you? hear you guys? Why don't you remove your your phones? I ca- I can't hear any of you. <laughs> and everybody else can your hear phones. everybody i don't know what to do my god just one second if you can remove your earphones just check without your earphones just one second you guys carry on t- t- talk to this i'm just going to look at the settings okay um okay i i wanted to share this also uh, with all who are viewing us um i consider uh, this particular uh, Uh, you know group of people uh, semi celestial out of the space also because i have noticed okay whomever i have come across uh, during my study my research and things like that uh, that they are superbly creative uh, i mean they are multitasking they are superbly creative and uh, uh, and they have some skill which is actually gifted you know i have noted that they are uh, very skilled so vidya have you noted this in uh, the lgbtqi groups have you noticed this skill basically uh, creative the, skill in them the see we do not come across uh, much and the skill factor but uh, yes the goodwill factor uh, that is a personal experience not on the basis yeah yeah i think uh, yeah profession. yeah or not on the basis of profession professionally i i found them a little different yeah yeah so professionally uh, they're gifted so yeah they gifted they, they are always either in distress or there are multiple problems that they come through so probably the uh, you know our focus is totally on dealing with the healthcare rather than dealing looking at anything more than that so Correct. that has been my experience no i have a lovely experience and i really call them beautiful people for this reason because uh, as and when i have come across uh, helping out or just listening just plainly listening to anybody um, i really felt that they are uh, superbly creative and they are different and uh, this is god gifted so you know it's it, it's it's in this world that we we always try to judge people around and we make stories regarding these 
I think uh, there's some point of time that you can just wait and look into a person's eye, not uh, you know, not judging the uh, gender identity of what the person, and trying to converse and having or strike a conversation with the person and create that uh, friendship towards them. Uh, I think that's a wonderful, uh, wonderful thought behind it. You know, we can always create a better environment around us think, with everybody yeah, the, the same. Environment, the environment can change very easily. Only if we all come yeah. to one conclusion that we are not going to be judgmental. Absolutely. All of us can happen. Absolutely. As as we see somebody, we have our notions which we fix on the person. He's tagged or she's tagged. We do not understand. We always read it, you know, do not judge a book by its cover. It's nice. It's very read. easy to read, Remember, but to practice but it is never, quite difficult. Uh, it's, never, it's never actually applied. Never implemented. So we need to do it. I mean, even, uh, I'm not saying, I mean, like others, even we were like that. Even I was like that. I mean, I also but we came out of a comfort it. zone. Yeah. Yeah, very phobic. But then I start reading all this. But we questioned. This. Yeah. Yeah, that is the time when I realized that there is something more to this. Have we realized that we say, why do you beg or why do you go to prostitution? True. But are we giving them an option for jobs? Are we ready to work with them? Are we giving them the right to education? Are we giving them equal opportunities? When we are not doing all of it, then how can we expect that they come out of these things? And that it's, is it's very, the yeah. It's very easy to talk it out, but it's very exactly. difficult to implement. Exactly. That's what the implementation part of it needs to have an open mind. Okay, exactly. we need to come out of our comfort zone and think about others also who are around us. Uh, I, I would like to share in a few things here, uh, Vidya. I think uh, while she joins in, she's having some technical issues. Uh, Cosmic Pride uh, would welcome if you have any questions which could be answered every week. A day in a week uh, with your questions, we would answer you and explain you. If you want to come and approach us and even be counseled, if you are scared, you can write and send it to us. We would be all the all the more happy to uh, you know support you to come out of this uh, fear yeah. or block or whatsoever. Or even if you're ignorant about it, you're most welcome to get in touch with us. As in every weekend, uh, we would put in in our column and answer your question. Uh, also, so in this way, at least we can create an awareness. Yeah, yeah with you. We would also like to say that uh, we would welcome some people who are having confusion, who need somebody to talk to, who are you know in a dilemma, teach teachers who are in a dilemma, because I think. Uh, not have uh, many platforms or many people as resource people who can help you out with uh, such kind of an issue. So we are yes. available Correct. for uh, so that we can do it in a very nice, technically, psychologically, a very scientific mm -hmm. approach which would really yeah. help the person, the third gender person, the family, the teachers, the equipment, all of them to live life full of, without having any boundaries. Without having to the school the environment. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Very nice environment. School and environment and also needs a lot of counseling. Right. Exactly. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, yes, yes. absolutely. Your sweet okay, voice cool. is heard. <laughs> I changed my phone, so uh, this. So uh, okay, so there is a uh, echo, uh, there, there is a disturbance still. So uh, do you guys want? Yeah. So do you want uh, do you want to change the earphone or something? One of you? No, no it's no, okay. I don't have anything. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. So we were going to we were going to move on to the next question where we says, okay, so I'm going to keep asking you these gender roles. Are they one by one, and then you can both add into it. So uh, is this hormonal? So Vidya, would you like to take this gender uh, yes. role? A uh, gender role. Is this how this is hormonal? Okay. Yes, there are uh, there are studies which do say that uh, hormones uh, definitely influence it a lot, especially in the prenatal period, the intrauterine period. There are androgens which do influence it. So I would right. attribute to hormonal to be some part of. I'm not saying totally, but yes, some mm -hmm. part of it. It could be attributed. Right. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, 
Shilpa, you want to add anything to this or no? This no, is fine. I think she okay. okay. Is this contagious? No, no, not no. at all. No. <laughs> capital M and capital O. Not at all. Because it's not a disease. Okay. All of us need to understand it's not a disease. Yes. It's not a it's disease. Not a it's disease. not a disease. I want to emphasize it. So right. it's not a disease. So the question of it's contagious not contagious. Okay. Is it environmental? Yes. Some environmental factors yes. definitely add to it. Maybe uh, addictions and uh, maybe pollution. There are no exact causes that have been attributed, but yes, environmental right. has been attributed. Additionally, maybe the right. psychological status of the mother, the abuse that the child goes through, all these things right. can be additional factors yes. which are causative. And okay, uh, and is this temperamental? I don't think so. I don't think so. When no, nor do I. Nor do I. I would not call it temperamental at all. Temperamental. I mean, okay. I don't know whether the third gender has a choice to make it temperamental in the first place. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. <laughs> okay. Is this uh, uh, situational? Situational? No, I don't think so. so no. Situational is the compromise that they do till they okay. really identify their gender. That is the situation. Themselves. Yeah. Situation. Correct. is not getting into their own identity. Getting into their own identity is something that they rightfully should be doing without any... Right. Problems. Right. Do you want to add anything to this, Shilpa? No, no, nothing to it. Okay. Is this forced? Uh, not really. I don't think anybody can force you unless it is in the asexual category uh, where you go into that torture and you consider yourself uh, and you have an aversion created by yourself because it is forced from somebody, you know. That could be only for the asexual category, but I don't think the others are forced. Nothing right. is forced. As far as forced is concerned, I don't think you need the third gender for forced. The forced can be because of any, yeah, you can any gender. It could be the yeah, male or correct. the female as well. So the question of uh, getting into a different identity doesn't arise because of hmm. uh, a forced kind of an attitude. Absolutely. Uh, what about, so we've already discussed whether it's at birth or not. Well, is it magical? Absolutely magical, I feel. I would like to add in here, as, as you were out of sight in this and I, when, uh, I and Vidya were discussing, uh, I noticed something very different from when, when I was working with them. Uh, specifically, uh, the transgender for the last 22 years, I would want to add this here. Transgenders are known as kinner in uh, India, okay, uh, okay. Kinder uh, comes into the category of semi-celestial being, fine, uh, in our mythology. So uh, okay. they are the ones who have the creative skills and they are the ones who, are, uh, who keep people entertained and they are happy souls and they uh, bring in a lot of hope to others, okay. These are the semi-celestial beings. If you see um, many of these uh, semi-celestial beings in every mythology in the world uh, are not having a specific gender. Mostly most of right. them do not have a specific gender. Okay, so right. uh, when, I, uh, when I started working with uh, the third gender, I really, I really found out that they are superbly imaginative, extremely creative, and eventually going into the LGBTQIA activ activism, uh, I also realized that uh, they may be considering themselves an identity uh, connected to whatever the name is given, right. but they are different in what sense? They're different in a magical way because they're extremely creative. Okay, right. they are far excellent than the practical world, and uh, it was it 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 was an uh, it was a kind of a magical feeling being with these people because they have that energy which they carry, which is slightly different and elevated than the others. So they right. are totally magical. And uh, as I said earlier also, they're beautiful people. That's what I call them. And I can right. relate uh, to many of their feelings, you know. That's, that's How sweet. It. How beautiful. Okay. Um, Vidya, is this hereditary like or... Add, yeah, please I go. I would like to add one thing. Many of us feel that all, all this is the Western culture. You know? Okay, yeah. Indian culture nahi hai. We go back to mythology just like she spoke. If you see uh, during when Ram was going for Vanvas, 
he asked everybody to go back to their house and not follow him but there was this group of the third gender who said that we need not take your orders and they followed him and because they they were so uh, you know truthful and uh, you know they have been with him he was the one who blessed them that you will have miraculous powers and your blessings would make a change in the world so oh. we all need to understand that these are not adopted ki hum wahan se dekhe un log karte hain humne kiya hai it has been there in our ancient history which we have not identified okay so it is part okay. of our culture and they have always been a part of our culture and our thought that they are blessed unke blessing se farak padta hai unke aane se farak padta hai unke naachne se farak padta hai bacche ko tum bless right. this is not only superstition how much it matters i do not know but they are blessed so the part right. is magical will definitely be attributed yes, to them because absolutely. the god whom we worship has worshiped them then they have to right. call something special how beautiful is that okay uh, uh vidya this is for you is this hereditary or it runs in the family see when it is genetic it could come or it could not come like many okay. of the traits it's not that this is the trait abhi if you look at our hair our hair can be like a mother it can be like a father it can be like our grandparents it can be like some far off relative also because there can mm. be a combination of genes from anybody in our family similarly it could get transmitted it is not necessarily transmitted in fact okay. if you want to look at the correlation you can even look at twins it's not required that both both the twins are of the third gender one twin can be perfectly straight and the second twin can be of the third gender if those okay. two can be different and anybody can be different so that's what they are just different that's there is Correct. no tagging a wrong for any reason and they do not have to have somebody in the family who is different that is why they become a third gender no right they need it right it's a completely different special situation for a person okay uh, dr shilpa would you I like am, to add something yeah. to yeah. um Uh, with regard to third gender with i just spoke about but when uh, we talk about the lgb not the t q q i a whatever uh, these these particular group uh, people uh, can produce children they can have a normal life whatever they want okay but uh, the thing is what the preference of identity is their own choice okay right they can have a, a kind of a life that they want to have and uh, that is Uh, it's solely their choice what they prefer to follow or uh, feel uh, that they are within that it's like wearing a clothes right. which is either tight which is uncomfortable or which is okay nicely stitched according to your body type okay, okay. So it's like that it's simple as that gender identity is not something that cannot uh, you know cannot be like the people around it is it can yeah. perform but the thing right. is the attraction and the choice would depend on the gender identified by that particular person right now yeah. something that also came up in one of the questions can gender preference gender role gender identity whatever that we like to this can it be treated by medicine or by therapy so dr vidya we'll take you first uh see now your voice is gone yeah see the thing is um, treated once i just mentioned that it, it's not a disease right so it's not to be treated it is to be supported yes like yes what happens is when the when we are saying gender identity gender identity is when somebody likes somebody immaterial of the physical appearance and the sex it is somebody like i think somebody so at that time if that person identifies himself as a female then we can give them feminizing hormones which help them to you know feel better and to look better because they like being a lady and right. secondly they have a right to have reconstructive surgery done right the reconstructive surgery can give them the external look the external genital yeah exactly like how they feel so this is where right. the role and the identity can be brought into in a single package 
and the person can look behave live and feel of the same gender so that is the option and that is the Beautiful. question of treatment doesn't arise it is not treatment it is only support support through medicine Correct. and reconstructive surgery both are possible right shilpa therapy or any other thing to actually rectify medicines as you say comes in when you follow a kind or you have a sickness that you are you know persistently being troubled about why would the uh, identity call be called as a sickness it isn't just a sickness it is just right. to realize the what you are so the only thing that you can do is lend your ears okay understand okay create an atmosphere for the person who wants to be in his own identity of choice okay right. give an opportunity for the person to recognize his own identity that is what you can do no therapy and medicine is necessary here i guess right. it's only opening up and keep giving a healthy atmosphere around to open up and express and talk about it right so this has been an absolute this is wonderful you know now we have debunk a lot of myths we have shifted paradigms during this course of this uh, beautiful talk with a whole lot of technical glitches be coming in and out and some disturbance but you know the main thing is that we know that it is not something that can be contracted it is not a disease and it cannot be treated and it can it just be supported so this is a uh, come out in a very beautiful way and we have had uh, dr vidya explain to us very clearly that your gender role or gender identity or gender preference is comes with your genes or with uh, the at uh, the preconceptual stages and all of that so please let's support please let's be inclusive please let's not you know uh, uh, distinguish and you know uh, and we are here this is the group that is cosmic pride which is uh, dr shilpa and dr vidya if anybody would like to have a personal consult or a personal uh, you know counseling can uh, reach out to us we will set it up for you guys and we will be having a little uh, place where we will explain a lot of myths so we welcome all your questions i've gone through i think we have answered a whole lot of questions but still if there are any questions please uh, let us know and we will um, we will address them uh, ladies it was a great talk thank you so much thank you uh, shiku uh we both have had a, a very beautiful journey here talking with you and specifically with all the people who are watching us here because we got an opportunity to express ourselves and also say that we are here to hear okay and uh -huh. reach out to you whenever you need us please be welcome and come any time to you know just to have a chat and come out of your comfort zone or blocks in your mind we are here okay beautiful. thank you so much thank you so beautiful. much beautiful thank you roshni thanks with the thank you thank you roshni this was a magical uh, uh, session she says thank you everybody that was listening thank in thank you thanks roshni and and, and a great uh, shout out to all our schoolmates poonam mona pradnya rupali deepa everybody because we actually put them on gun point and said that they had to come here so <laughs> they are here thank which you is so, so much sweet. all of you <laughs> Dr. Vidya, thank you so much for your time. You can go back to your saving lives. <laughs> right. Thank you and bye bye. Have a good evening. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Shobha, Purnima, Krusha, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye.